wild marine biologists out there, the two favorite shark enthusiasts back here for Sundafellas. I'm Logan Myers. It's my good mate over there. And I'm Henry Hill. And we are asking the question, is it safe to go back in the water? Beautiful day. The beaches are open and the people are having a wonderful time. Amity, as you know, means friendship. Once again, it's time that we are reviewing Jaws 2, the sequel to the original Jaws by Steven Spielberg. And uh, let's just say it's a sequel that uh, shouldn't have been made. Jaws 2. The terror continues. You know, for many years, it went down as one of the greatest sequels of all time, according to critics, and I would have to disagree. <laughs> I remember it being a lot better than than it was. You know, I just rewatched this. The summer I introduced my year old son to Jaws, the original, and I've watched the original Jaws three times in the past two weeks. I love that movie. One of the greatest movies ever made. And then you have this sequel that came out three years later, 1978. Some other familiar films came out that year. Halloween, if you remember. 1978 was a good year. Grease, Animal House. There's a lot of big movies that came out. Wow. Um, but, but Jaws came out. Sequel, Jeanette Swart uh, directed this film. So it doesn't have the Spielberg touch to it, and it's pretty cheesy. You have Brody is not really the town hero anymore because it's been quiet. He killed the, the shark, killed Jaws, and then the beginning of the film, there's some like divers that or checking out the wreckage of the orca, the you know ship from the original film, Quint's boat, mm-hmm. and a shark attacks him and kills him. There's pictures. Brody gets him developed. He's like, oh, that looks familiar. It looks like a great white shark. I love how nobody remembers that he killed the shark that was eating all the residents of Amity. Nobody gives a shit anymore. Everybody's back, you know, swimming without a care in the world. <laughs> and uh, even the divers going down to check out the old orca. That was the most interesting part of the movie for me, seeing the boat at the bottom of the, you know, the water there in the ocean and seeing the divers just fucking around and taking selfies and pictures there. And then for no reason at all, there's another giant great white shark that's coming to attack. And they never really explained that. Was that like the, the offspring of the other shark or? Right. Yeah, I know. Or just a pissed targets, off cousin or. <laughs> and it target, targets uh, Brody's family, essentially. Yeah. And that's for. You know, they debunked a lot of this, uh, talking about great white sharks. They're like, no, they would never do this. They don't do that. Can't hunt oh. down and stuff. And all the ridiculous scenes they set up in the movie. But that's the setup. And then, you know, Roy Scheider playing Brody in this. I love that guy. I mean, it's, mm-hmm. He's what makes these films great. Uh, but really, it's a teenage cast. Teenage cast in this <laughs> film. You have uh, his teenage son, Mike, and then his other son, Sean. They go on this, like, sailboating trip with their friends. And that's when the sharks, you know, starts killing people and they're out on the boats and Brody's had to go out and save his kids, essentially. And so it's a, pretty much the rest of the film. A teenage cast of 30 somethings, we'll say. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think I recognize one of the guys from one of the Friday the 13th films, if it's the same guy. No, would... there's the one guy oh, from, okay. that played Arnie from Christine was in this. That's what it is. I knew I had seen that guy before. Okay. Wow. Yes. I should have looked yeah. it up. Yeah. He, he was one of the guys with the goofy hats. There was like three yeah. guys that were those little, I don't even know what they are, hats. So they all look the same. They all long hair. But yeah, okay. he was probably the best of the teenagers. He played Arnie and Christine that came out in 1983, John Carpenter film. Yes. A much better film. This one had some, you know, good qualities. Like you mentioned, Roy Scheider, he owns this role. He is Brody. I just wish he was given more respect in the film. It's just unbelievable that nobody cares and nobody wants to believe them warns the town about it and warns the mayor. The mayor's still like, no, they're going to swim. We can't stop it. You know, come on. How many bodies need to stack up in your little town there, mayor? He just doesn't get it. Uh, But yeah, plenty of scenes that feature a much more robotic and obviously fake shark. Spielberg was able to make that shark look so realistic. And that's what really made Jaws 1 feel like, you know, more of a horror film, uh, you know, than it's obviously recognized as now. But this one just feels like they had a robotic shark that was able to open and close the mouth. And even like when it moves, when it comes out of the water, it feels like it's just like, it just, it looks really bad. It doesn't flow. Yeah, Yeah, it doesn't flow the camera. Yeah, the whole animatronic or whatever they use. I don't know if they use the same sharks, but it looked pretty terrible and it looked very fake. Uh, the whole scene with the the boat, right? The lady's on the boat on the, the ocean and it like comes up, sticks the nose right through it. Yeah. And it's like completely fake. <laughs> and that's really kind of brought me out of the movie. I thought the shark didn't look good at all compared to the first movie. 
It just uh, look, took you out of the film and just was an obvious animatronic. Yeah, plenty of plot holes go, galore here. Just a cash grab here from Jaws 2. Richard Dreyfus, he didn't want to come back. Steven Spielberg, nobody wanted to be associated with this. Roy Schreider, you know, he was the only one that came in and did most of the films. I think he came back in four but he's really the only saving grace for the film. And, you know, that makes it passable even. Otherwise, it's just a throwaway sequel. But having said that, it's the best sequel, uh, you know, out of the four Jaws film, for sure. It's the it's the best sequel. Um, but that it's not saying much when you go back and watch rewatch this film. It had been years since I'd watched it, and it just seemed really bad, especially after watching the first one so recently. It's just glaringly obvious to all the mistakes and the stupid kids and the stupid things people are doing and then at the end when the, the shark bites the electrical wire you know somehow brody doesn't get shocked and you know has a typical uh fake look of when you know the shark bites the wire and sparks are flying in its mouth and it just looks terribly bad <laughs> it just looks <laughs> awful and of course bursts into flames and yeah it's just just a bad cheesy sequel yeah i didn't really work out for, for me i've watched it a few times and it took me a few days to get through each setting just didn't have the magic from the first film the teenage cast was pretty all pretty forgettable and it was very crowded there's so many characters there's like yeah, all of them. too many and like you kind of like one girl's freaking out. You have the little kid that's freaking out, obviously, as to seeing the shark around them and not knowing if they're going to survive. And then the rest of the guys are just, you know, testosterone and dorky and just boring. You know, Brody was the mm -hmm. best part, you know, going out to save them. And Bex didn't work in this film. And I will say the saving grace. I love seeing, you know, the mayor from the first movie and this Larry Vaughn. I thought he's always ri ridiculous. He learned absolutely nothing from the massacre in the first movie. <laughs> he's like, oh, it's not a shark. No, I don't know what you're talking about when right. he looked at the pictures that uh, Brody brought in. He's like, no, we'll keep the beach open. We need to make our money for all the, you know, our small town of Martha's Vineyard. What a moron. But uh, he, <laughs> he made the movie great too and comedic. Yes. And didn't have that Quentin Hooper vibe to it. The magic from the first movie, the trifecta they didn't have that in this movie and it just overall pretty forgettable movie absolutely that's what i was going to say too missing quint missing hooper definitely missing those three together it was what really made the first film work they had that magic together obviously and spielberg uh the tension wasn't there in this one none of the suspense you know it was just they tried to go more gory and you know more kills in this one but uh, it lost it lost what the first one did so right. It didn't have it in this one. New director, you know, he tried his best. It was okay. But overall, yeah, pretty bad effects and nothing like the original. Yeah, nothing compares to the original. <laughs> and that's, that's right. absolutely true here. 1978, great year. This is the third highest grossing film of 1978 behind Grease and Animal House. So it killed it at the box office. I'm sure in 1978, you know, there wasn't movies like this. So seeing this in the big screen, it probably would have been good. Just a movie mm -hmm. that didn't age well. You know, yeah. I, I remember loving this as a kid and rewatching as an adult. doesn't hold up. So definitely not a good sequel. A movie I'm definitely not going to rewatch anytime soon. So that being said, I'm going to give <laughs> Jaws 2. It came out in 1978. I'll give it a three out of five. Brody hair pieces. <laughs> I'm going to give it the same thing. I'll be nice. I could have said two and a half, but I think it deserves a three out of five. Quint hair pieces. <laughs> So we want to hear from you guys. What did you guys think of Jaws 2? Did you guys enjoy it more than we did? Um, when was the last time you watched Jaws 2, if it has been a while? Let us know in the comment section below, and don't forget to click subscribe. Also, follow along with us on our all our social media pages, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, for all the latest and greatest in TV, movie, news, and reviews. Keep those eyes peeled right here on this YouTube channel. Me and this guy over here are going to be viewing movies and TV shows all summer long. Coming up this weekend, we got two big films, blockbusters, being released. I'm talking about Christopher Nolan's Oppenheimer and, of course, Barbie coming out. Uh, so we're going to be ha having lots of reviews like that. The big summer blockbuster movies and, you know, TV shows coming out. So stay tuned right here. Stay tuned all summer long. It's getting hot in here. We're going to continue the summer theme here. So thank you guys for watching our review, our classic review of the sequel to Jaws, Jaws 2. Until the next Cinefellas Movie Review, I'm Uncle Henry Hooper. And I'm Uncle Roy Scheider signing out until the next movie review. Cheers! <laughs> <laughs>